Welcome. I fell off my bicycle the other day and it hurt. I didn't break anything, but I was shaken up and I really didn't want to get back on the bike and finish my ride. But I did after a few minutes when I caught my breath and I asked myself, what could I have done differently? You know, did I brake too fast? Did I take the corner too sharp? Did I fail to avoid a hazard in the road? Now failing to get back on the bike or failing to keep my routine wouldn't have helped me. It wouldn't have helped me keep my fitness level. It wouldn't have helped me get over my fear. And there's a similar analogy in physics. Maybe you had a test recently that you didn't perform well on. Maybe it was lack of understanding. Maybe you made an inadvertent error that cost you a lot of points. And that can be discouraging. It can make you feel like all that effort you invested was not rewarded. But let me encourage you, go ahead and ask those specific questions. Was it lack of understanding? Was it lack of preparation? Did I make a mistake because I wasn't paying enough attention to something like units? But do this, apply the answers as you go forward with the reading and with doing the homework for the next unit. Remember that the physics classroom is the weight room for the mind, and avoidance isn't going to help you get ready for the next test. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we're asked questions about things like acceleration and distance traveled. This should bring to mind kinematic equations, and that's appropriate, only this time we're dealing with rotational motion. And so there are analogies to the kinematic equations for linear motion that we will use for analyzing rotational motion. In specific, we're going to use kinematic equations for rotational motion And we're looking to find, first of all, angular acceleration. And when we're dealing with rotational motion, the uh, parameters are often described by Greek letters. So instead of A for acceleration, we use alpha for angular acceleration to help us distinguish. And we're given initial and final angular velocities, and these are designated velocities. These are designated by the Greek letter omega, so we have omega initial and omega final. And the time, t. Now time is time, so we don't use a Greek letter for that, right? We still have lowercase t for time. As we develop this problem, let's consider what we have. We're focusing on the crankshaft of the automobile, and it has an angular velocity omega, which is changing. That's why we get the acceleration. It has a radius. We're told that that radius is 3.7 centimeters, and we're going to go ahead and convert that to MKS units right now, along with the other quantities we're given. So that is equal to 0 0.037 meters. We're told that our initial angular velocity is 1100 RPM, or revolutions per minute. Now the MKS unit for that is radians per second. So after we convert, we get 115.19 radians per second. I'm going to leave more significant figures than I'll need at the end to avoid rounding error. So that's omega naught. And we have R. Now our final angular velocity, we're told, is 5300. 5300 RPM, which converts to 550.01 radians per second. We're told that acceleration is constant. That's important because that means that the kinematic equations apply. And we're told that the time that all this is happening in is two and a half seconds. So let's make a plan. First of all, we're asked three different things, and so we'll go ahead and break up our plan according to those steps. The first one is to find the angular velocity. So what we want to do first is to recall we will use the kinematic equations for rotational motion, 
to express the final angular velocity in terms of the initial angular velocity, acceleration, and time. What we're actually after is the rotational acceleration, so we want to solve that symbolically for the, the angular acceleration, and then we can substitute values and compute that angular acceleration, which we will then report to the correct number of significant figures at that point. Now our second task, that was task A, finding the angular acceleration. Task B is to find the translational acceleration of a point on the edge of the crankshaft. So what does that look like? If we pick any point, it has a translational acceleration that can be expressed by the definition of translational acceleration. So the first step is to recall the definition relating translational and rotational acceleration, which is that the translational acceleration is the rotational acceleration times the radius of the point uh, that you're interested in. And then, that's already in the form we need since we're looking for translational acceleration, so we will substitute values and compute that translational acceleration. Now we'll substitute non-rounded values and then we'll report a final answer to two significant digits. Finally, we are asked to compute how many revolutions the crankshaft underwent during that 2.5 seconds. That's really a distance question, right? So, first of all, we'll compute the total distance that the crankshaft revolves through, and then we will translate that into a number of revolutions. So, we want to express the angular position which is denoted by the Greek letter theta rather than x, which we commonly use for linear distance, in terms of the initial position, which we would call theta zero or theta naught, the angular velocity, initial angular velocity, the angular acceleration, and time. Now since, again, that is the quantity we're interested in, we can substitute values and compute theta. But what is theta? Theta is the total angular distance traveled. And we're asked for revolutions, you know, how many times the crankshaft spun around. So we need to convert that. So finally, we will convert theta to number of revolutions. And the way we do that is that theta is going to be in radians, is one revolution. And that's the term, the conversion that we will use to figure out how many times the crankshaft spun around. Now we're ready to evaluate this problem. And we recall that the final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration times time. The angular acceleration is what we seek, so we will then solve for it, and that's going to be equal to the final minus the initial angular velocities over time. You could also think of that as the change in angular velocity over time. Then we can substitute values. We have 550.01 radians per second minus 115.19 it was radians per second and this change is happening in 2.5 seconds. And so we compute carefully then that the angular acceleration is 175.93 radians per second squared. Too many significant digits, so we'll round off to report our answer to two significant digits because that's what we were given in our given quantities. So the angular acceleration is 180 radians per second squared. So now we're on to part B. And we recall that the translational acceleration is that angular acceleration times the radius. And so we have that's equal to, we will use our non-rounded figure so that we don't introduce rounding errors, times the two point, oh, not time, but the radius, which was 0 0.037 meters. And so we get that the translational acceleration is equal to 
Not a lot of room there. 6.509 meters per second squared. And we'll report that to two significant figures. The tangential acceleration is, and that rounds to 6.5 meters per second squared. And finally, we're asked, how many revolutions does the crankshaft undergo? So that is really, we begin with a question of position. How, what is the angle that a point on the edge of the crankshaft has passed through during that time? The kinematic equation for that is that the, the angular distance traveled is the initial angular position, or that the angular position is the initial angular position, plus the initial angular velocity times time, plus one half the angular acceleration, times time squared. We can designate the initial angular position as zero since we're actually interested in the change in position. So we'll write theta naught equals zero. And then we can substitute values. So that is equal to omega naught, which was 115.19 radians per second times 2.5 seconds plus one-half the angular acceleration, again the non-rounded value, 175.93 radians per second squared, times the time squared. And so we get that the total angle uh, that a point on the edge has gone through is 837.75 76 radians. So 837.756 radians times one revolution over two pi radians, and that gives us 133.33 revolutions. So the crankshaft undergoes to two significant digits 130 revolutions in 2.5 seconds. So that answers all of our questions. How can we assess these answers to determine whether they are correct or not? Well, we always want to start with units. And as we look back at part A, when we substituted our values, we have radians per second in the numerator divided by seconds, which gives us radians per second squared, which is appropriate for an angular acceleration. In part B, we converted radians per second squared to meters per second squared, which is a linear uh, unit for acceleration, and that's okay. Position, as long as we are still in MKS units, our position, our angular position is in radians, and so that is also appropriate. And so for parts A, B, and C, we are content that our units are correct, which means we probably didn't forget to convert, and we probably didn't forget a term. Secondly, how do we know whether our magnitude makes sense? Well, we can take the... Let's back up a little bit. The answers to part C and part B really hinge on us having the correct answer for angular acceleration. So let's focus our assessment on that. Uh, the angular acceleration, if we approximate that angular acceleration to be 180, radians per second squared. Then if we multiply the acceleration times time, we should get the change in the angular velocity, which was about 440 meters, not meters, radians per second. And so we have 180 radians per second squared times 2.5 seconds does that equal 440 radians per second? And this actually ends up being 450 radians per second. And then if you were to repeat this calculation using 175 radians per second, taking the lower estimate of that, of that angular acceleration, you come up with a delta W of 440 radians per second. So you can sort of bound your answer that way. And by back calculating and checking our units, we have confidence that our answer is correct.